With our project set up, let's start by writing our first real test and implementing the functionality required for that test to pass. We'll be testing that our input is automatically focused when the application loads. In order to do that, we need a way to identify the input in our test code. We can use the application preview along with Chrome's DevTools to inspect elements in the application and get the information we need. Right inside the app preview in Cypress, I'll right click on the input and choose inspect from the menu. This will open DevTools and go right to the input field in the elements inspector. Here, we can see that this input has a class of new to do, and this is what we'll use to identify the input in our test. Now that we have what we need, let's close the DevTools and jump back into our test code. After the visit command, we'll add a call to sci.focused. This will get whatever element has focus on our page. Once we have that, we can add an assertion to make sure that the element yielded by focused is our text input by verifying that it has the class new to do. Once we save this, Cypress will detect our file changed and run our test for us again. This time, we can see a delay before the test ultimately fails. Two important things happened here. One, our test failed because Cypress couldn't find a focused element. We had an assertion about our class, but our failure is because we never got to the assertion in the first place. The error message provided in the command log is specific enough to let us know not only that our test failed, but exactly which step in the test it failed on. With this knowledge, we know that we need to change our app code to make sure something is focused when the page loads. Two, there was a delay because Cypress automatically retried that command until a timed out. When Cypress can't find an element, it will retry until it either finds the element or times out. This means if an element won't be immediately available, you won't need to guess at the timing and add code to wait for random periods of time. Since we know why our test is failing, let's update our app code to make it pass. The input field we're concerned about is in the to-do form component, so we'll find that under source, components, and open it up. We can set the focus on the input by adding the autofocus property to it. We'll save that and back in the Cypress runner, rerun our test. This time our test passes, so we know that Cypress was able to find a focused element, and we verified that it's the element we wanted with our assertion. Let's create a second test. Here, we'll test that our text field accepts input. Rather than have each new test build up the number of tests we need to run in order to get results, we'll put a dot only on our it, ensuring that this test will run by itself. By doing this on each test as we work through the feature, our feedback loop stays fast, we can stay focused, and we won't unintentionally create dependencies between our tests. Once again, we need to visit our page before we can do anything with its contents. Then we'll use the sci.get command to get our input. In our previous test, we got the input using sci.focused. We could use that again here, but that would unnecessarily couple this test to another feature. We want to test if the field accepts input, and it should do that even if the autofocus is no longer a requirement. In the long run, maintenance will be easier if we can keep our test isolated from unrelated features as much as possible. When we save, our test will run. Notice that the only made it so only this test ran. So far, everything is passing, so we know that our application can be reached and that the requested element is present. If the element were not present, a default assertion in get would have failed our test. To demonstrate that, I'll change the selector used in the get command, and we'll see that the test is delayed before it ultimately fails. Cypress retries the get command until it times out, and then we see the failure with an error message that makes it pretty clear that the element we asked for couldn't be found. When we correct the selector, our test passes again, and we can carry on with our test. Now that we've gotten the input, we'd like to type into it. We can do that by issuing the type command, which will chain onto the get. We'll pass in the text we wish to type, and once we've typed the text, we want to ensure that the field's value matches what we've typed. We can do that by chaining a should to our commands and asserting that the input should have a value. We want that value to match what we passed to type, so rather than typing it again and making the test prone to failure due to input errors, I'll grab the string from type and move that into a constant. I'll use that constant in the type command and then again to complete this assertion. Saving and running this test will result in a passing test. This test might seem a bit useless, but we're going to make this input a controlled input. What this essentially means is that instead of standard input behavior like we just witnessed, our application code will handle changes to the input and then reset its value. So it's possible that our application could alter the input as it's typed. We want the controlled input to reflect exactly what the user types, so this test will ensure that we get our implementation right. With our test in place, we can add the current to-do property to our application state 
and we'll default that value to an empty string. Then we can pass that value from our state into the to do form component, and then we'll use current to do as the value property on the input. Now, running the test again will result in a failing test. Our test is making it obvious that our controlled input implementation isn't complete. Let's write the rest of the code to get this test to pass. Back in the to do app component, we'll add a method called handle new to do change, and we'll use the past in event object to update the state by setting current to do to the value received from the event's target. We'll add a line to the component's constructor to make sure this method is called with the correct this context. And then back in our render method, we'll pass the new handler down to the to do form component. In the to do form component, we'll use the handler for the on change event of the input. With all of that wired up, we can save our changes and rerun the test, and this time our test is passing. Back in our spec file, let's remove the only from the second test. When we look at these two tests together, you notice a bit of duplication. Each test is visiting our page before doing anything else. Rather than continuing to add a visit at the top of each test, we can refactor this code to remove the duplication while retaining the existing behavior. We'll do this by adding a before each at the top of the describe block. The before each, as the name implies, will run before each individual test. We'll put our visit call in this before each, and then we can remove the visit from each test. With that done, we'll run both tests and we'll see that everything ran as expected. If we inspect the individual tests in the command log, we'll see that each test has a log entry for before each, with a visit command being logged out. We can take this refactoring one step further. We'll be creating multiple spec files and they will all need to visit our application. We'll keep our visit call in the before each, but we can move this URL value into the Cypress configuration. In the root of the project, we'll find cypress.json, which was created when Cypress first ran and seeded our project. We'll add the base URL property here and give it our local host address as a value. With that in place, we can go back to our test code and update the visit to simply visit the root of our site. Let's run our spec file again, and we can verify that both tests still run and pass as intended.